Well, first up tonight, months after a CREM2 investigation into safety concerns aboard Durham bus, uh, school buses, they've been fined by the Department of Labor and Industries for violating safety codes. The outbreak among Durham bus drivers and other employees was at its height in February of 2021. One bus attendant died and dozens of others contracted COVID-19. crem 2s Morgan Trow has been following this outbreak for six months now. She is live in the newsroom tonight with more on this investigation. Morgan. Mark, Tom, after we learned of the COVID outbreak at Durham, we filed numerous public records requests for emails, videos, and documents to find out what exactly was going on inside the buses. The videos we obtained showed potential safety violations and prompted investigation by labor and industries. Now, LNI has concluded in this citation that Durham didn't ensure a safe workplace. Durham School Services is a company that contracts with Spokane Public Schools, driving thousands of kids to and from their school every day. After months of investigating, the Washington Department of Labor and Industries says Durham School Services did not provide a workplace free from recognized hazards that are causing or are likely to cause serious injury or death. Durham is now facing a $7,000 fine from the state following a COVID-19 outbreak among workers. The Spokane Regional Health District says a COVID outbreak killed one, infected more than 30, and quarantined more than 60 bus employees in less than one month. Last March, Krem filed a public records request to see what was happening on the Durham buses. The tapes show full buses, drivers not always wearing their masks, and other COVID safety violations. Labor and Industries spokesperson says the team was unaware of the bus tapes before our investigation. After our coverage, L and I launched two inspections, one focusing on safety and the other on the death of bus attendant Dave Simpson. L and I cites Durham for violating protocols related to social distancing, masking, providing PPE, and reporting COVID hospitalizations and death. The document says that the company did not ensure six feet of distance between employees and that employees were wearing face coverings or masks properly, all of which was shown in our tapes. The infraction state's employee interviews also determined that staff did not maintain social distance or wear masks properly in the break room. The citation adds that approximately 20 employees would gather in the break room before clocking in with masks below their nose and or mouths, and employees were also gathering and sitting at tables without maintaining six feet of distance. LNI also noted the lack of PPE. The citation says the employer did not ensure to provide PPE at no cost to employees if the PPE is the type that would reasonably or normally be worn away from the workplace. It shows two instances where employees asked for face shields or were required to wear them, but Durham did not provide them. It adds that at least one employee had to buy their own equipment and was not reimbursed. Labor and Industries also found that Durham failed to report deaths and inpatient hospitalizations to the Division of Occupational Safety and Health within eight hours. It adds state regulators determined bus attendant Dave Simpson's death was not reported for a week. They also learned that three hospitalized Durham employees were not reported until the next month. Records released to CRAM in March show Spokane Public Schools was left in the dark about the outbreak, with emails showing school employees begging for Durham to address the situation with them. SPS later acknowledged reports that safety protocols had not been followed, fining Durham for violations that can no longer be overlooked. SPS gave us a statement that reads in part, we expressed our disappointment and concern to company management immediately upon learning about the non-compliance last year. The company responded with a range of corrective actions intended to ensure isolated incidents like these are avoided moving forward. But whether SPS continues to contract with Durham isn't certain. Their statement continues, SPS is entering year four of a five-year contract with Durham. We are now forming a work group to evaluate transportation options and develop a set of recommendations for next steps and and the future of our transportation services. Durham confirms they are appealing the fine, a process that can take up to six months. We reached out to numerous Durham officials and received a response that reads in part, the case referenced happened last year. Since that time, we have made significant management changes. They say there is a new general manager and a new safety supervisor. Neither were available to comment. But is a $7,000 fine to a large company that operates in more than 30 states adequate? Dave Simpson's family says no, and they are planning to sue Durham for his death. LNI says they calculate penalties by the rate of severity and the probability that an injury or illness occurs. That includes the amount of exposure and the company's track record of health and safety. In the newsroom tonight, 
Morgan Traub, Crime 2 News.